Alright, what's up guys, it's Delp, and I'm going to show you how I make these trap beats in LMMS. So this is the one I recently just posted, and you can see how you know complicated it is. I'm just going to break it down, and hopefully I can show you guys how to make shit that goes hard like this. So... And this. So I'm just going to show you. So, first off, it doesn't even matter if you use a sample or you create a melody like I did here. Um, it does not matter. So, this is a melody I created. Obviously, it changes up a little bit. This one no longer has the little double rolls right here. And the synthesizer I'm using this is obviously a fucking it's a VST that I downloaded. It's called Firebird. I downloaded it a while ago. On a, sorry, I don't have the fucking link to it, but this is what the synthesizer looks like. I used it for the little intro and for the main melody. So, and then, so yeah, I made the melody here, I changed it up on a couple of them, um, let me see which one I did it on, I think it was just this last one, and then this one, yeah, and then I used these same ones down here for the main melody, so right here, and right here. So, you can hear it change up. You can hear, like, the little rolls and the plucks and stuff. So, yeah. Um... And then here I added some re-space, which is in this drum kit I have. Um, I guess I'll show you it. I have a lot of drum kits. These are all drum kits I have. But my favorite one is this one because it has like the hardest sounding shit in it. Uh, it's called the Cosmic Cosmics Drum Kit. Uh, Cosmic is also a producer, and he just he re he makes music kind of like this, and he released a drum kit, so I was like, fuck it, I'll buy it. It was like 15 bucks, but it has some good sounds in it, like like the kicks. Everything punches, like, hard. So, but yeah, I used the respace from in here. I don't remember which one, but I added this little tune in the respace. And then I added a violin right here. Just straight, simple to the point, not much to it. And then I changed up the melody here. And then, oh yeah, right here for the, the melody, here's my one, here's my tag. Like right at my tag, you can hear the melody kind of like pitch shift or like basically what I used is uh, I used the, the low pass filter and I just created this. You hear a lot of this. You, you hear this. Jesus Christ, I can't talk. You hear this a lot in trap music now. This little just listen. You can see basically what I'm doing. I just pitched it down 
Well, I didn't even pitch it. I just low passed it and then reset it, low pass it, reset, low pass. So, and I went back to normal right when the next bar comes in. And then just to add to the ambience, I added a little live hi hats. And then I added some perks on top of that. If you notice at the end here, it pans left and right. So, yeah. All right, now we're getting to the drop. So that was the beginning. Here's here's the kicker right here. So obviously I changed up the melody to a pluck. But if you listen, you can actually hear that the volume increases while this volume decreases. So So you can see right here, this is the volume for the... If you don't know how the, the automation in LMMS works, then this probably looks really confusing. Basically, the volume... Like, here, let me just create a random one. So, like, this is just a bar level, and you can change whether it is uh, sloped like that, whether it's squares, or whether it's a, like, a sound wave like this. This basically, like, if you were to put a low pass on this, it's just gradually goes down and then back up and this also gets into the 808s which I'm going to talk about later but you know, basically every time you have one like so right here I have it at zero it automatically changes the volume to zero so even if um, like say I play it right there watch the volume right here watch this once it passes this point, it resets to zero. Bam, see that? And it goes back up. Automations, automations are just controllers. So. Alright, now we're in the main melody. I did switch it up a couple times. That's no biggie. <coughs> um, here's the snare, simple enough. Not really much to it and the hi hats I kind of brought in because obviously the drop in the beat is a little delayed but that's what makes it sound hard I have the same hi hat pattern that runs throughout the whole thing <clears throat> losing my voice and then okay so right here if you listen to this melody listen to the pitch of it and then right here I changed it up. I gave it a higher pitch and then I also matched the violins with it. Oops. And then brought in the live hi-hats for the second bar and then here's some hi-hats that go crazy with the with the panning one. I think these ones are more crazy. Yeah. See, as you can see, I made a V with it. And then I fucking, I fucking go crazy with the panning and pitching. And I just kind of repeated that down here in multiple bars. Um, alright. This, what is this? Okay, that's just a little drum before the drop. Alright, now let me talk about the 808s and the kicks. So obviously the bass is delayed. And for the kicks, there's a reason why they kick, where they punch so hard through everything else. It's because I side-chained their shit out of it. So if I look at any one of these, like I'll go into here for like the main melody, you see the effects chain is on one. So if I go into my kicks here, the effects, I have a peak controller. So basically, every time that that key is pressed for that kick button, it it has the ability to control something. So I I linked that controller 
to the volume on the effects one. So if I go to here and if I let the kicks draw out, watch this. See? Every time it kicks that that uh that volume meter goes down. So if you link the volume to everything else that's in the song, it'll momentarily mute that sound so the punch will kick through it instead of clash with it. So if I turn that controller off, I'll show you what it sounds like. See, it doesn't sound as good. That's how I did that. Now, with the... Uh, well, here, I'll show you some of the... Like right here, here's a kick roll. The volume goes out for a hot minute after a, a roll, but that's fine. Um, oh, yeah, so, the 808s. <sighs> All right, these are a trip, because... These are probably the hardest thing to do in LMMS, but it is possible. So I just used a regular 808 and I kind of uptoned it. I put it through a tube amp just so I can draw it out. You can hear how it sounds like muffled. Um, so for the drop, this is how you make your drops sound insane. All right. So, uh, right before the kick and the main bass line comes in like a split second before you're going to want to put a, a a bass note or 808 note and then pitch it up a fuck ton like immediately before so it sounds like this very quickly so in order to pitch them up like that you just you click the automation thing right here you click on it and as you can see, I pitched it up from here all the way up, about two two bars away. So I pitched it up a lot. I pitched it up a sixteenth. No, I, what the fuck? Yeah, I pitched it up. Yeah, I pitched it up three semitones. So when it hits, like the bass comes in, basically. Now you hear it. Okay, now we'll get into that. Now we're gonna get into the slides. This is everybody's favorite part of this kind of music, is these damn 808 slides. So, it basically works the same way. What I did with the drop. Basically, just take your um, your automation and then you bring it up a semitone. Or two, depending on how hard you want it to sound. Or you can do not a semitone, just do like the same, uh, within the same key. So, that's basically what I did. And like, the shorter-ish, like I find that like an eighth sounds is that an eighth yeah so i th i think an eighth is probably the best like right here an eighth and a sixteenth is probably the best way to go when you're trying to slide your 808 so either have it this long or not this long either have it yeah yeah come on have it this long or this long or you can do a triplet but i usually have it about around this size And then yeah, you just basically pitch it up as like as short as you can. Or else it's not gonna sound that hard. And then right here, I I pan the eight weights. That's not really a biggie though. Um, let's see, there's a lot more sliding going on here. More slides. 
And the second drop here. This one has three slides, like right at the beginning. So yeah, that's basically the whole beat. Like, and then right here at the end, I did the same little low pass thing where I made it. And I gave it a little riser effect, but I reversed it. So. And then I had the low pass come down with the volume, so it, so it gets a little bit more quieter than it usually would. And that's it. Besides from a lot of arrangement, there's not really much else to it. That's pretty much it. There's like there's like these risers and fucking uprising uprising and down settings. I can't remember what they're called. But these basically they make they go tsh. So yeah. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and the the hi hats right here, I sped them up. So instead of sounding like this, I just I just double all of them pretty much. So it makes it a little bit more crazy. And then you could also hear right here, I fucking, I panned the 808s, or not the 808s, the kicks, just to bring up the next drop, yeah. But that's it, that's pretty much how I make that in here, besides all the arrangement. I pretty much, besides a bunch of, uh, arrangement and tuning, everything, that's pretty much it. So, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.